All right, so really all of like world history is essentially a, a history, a story of constant movement. Humans have always moved around. That's sort of, you know, foundational to humans, right? Like we move, we don't stay in one spot. Um, but there's something that always forces us to move or um, motivates us to move. And then we always have to decide on where to go. And so when you look at human geography, that's what you're focused on, right? It's there's, you still have to know this kind of history of movement. And I'm going to touch on some of the big historical migrations that you really have to know for this class. Um, but it, in terms of like, how do you study these things as a human geographer? It's less about like what happened and it's more about why, right? Like why did people move around and what effect did that have on the people themselves and on the places that they left and the places that they go to? That's sort of the difference between, you know, a human geographer and a historian. So even though we're going to look at some big historic moments tonight, um, you, it's not about memorizing the dates and the people and all those things. It's really about understanding the patterns and how they affect today. Okay, so, you know, one of the earliest human movements is, of course, these like early human migrations. So this is this map is specifically called like an out of the out of Africa theory. The idea is that humans as a species originated in Africa, right? In that like north, you know, central eastern portion of Africa. And from there, because of climate, because of droughts, lack of resources, you know, all different reasons, humans left right? They migrated. And of course, some stayed, but humans migrated out. And so you can see on this map how long it took humans to get to different places, you know, all the way up until about 11,000 or let's say 1,000 years ago is, is the point in which the whole earth is pretty much inhabited, which, you know, is relatively not that long. So, you know, this is worth it to, to see as just like, this is a story of movement. That is what world history is based on. You know, we exist in all these different places and have built different cultures and belief systems and politics. Um, but we we all got there in a certain time. And, you know, why we move around is this is what we're focused on. OK. All right. So. Um, let's see. OK, so again, pause me. Let me know when you need me to answer any questions. OK, so. We're going to talk about push and pull factors for the next several minutes. All right. So ultimately, th these are like human geography is really all knowing vocabulary. Right. So there's so many different terms for you to know. And I highly recommend getting on Quizlet and studying these terms every single day. Because if you know the terms, you're going to kill it on the test. So two of the terms that you really need to know for migrations are push factor and pull factor. Okay, so a push factor is basically why someone leaves a place. Um, you know, and there's a lot of different reasons we're going to talk about. Sometimes they're forced to leave. Sometimes other issues, you know, effectively force them to leave, right? If there's not enough food or I'm in danger. Um, and sometimes there's just, you know, it's not necessarily bad, but I'm, I, I got to go. I, gotta, I can't stay here, right? So we're in this session, we're not just talking about migrations between countries. That's part of it, right? People move from country to country. We're also just talking about just people moving. So if I move from this street to that street, I'm migrating, right? Why? Why? What made me leave this place? And then I'm, if I'm leaving this place, now I'm going to somewhere. This is a pull factor. Why am I moving over there? Why did I choose that street, that city, that town, that country? Why there? So these are the two like foundational terms. These are the you know push and pull factor kind of explain everything, right? So let's go through them. All right, so in terms of push, um, there are economic factors. So economic is anything that has to do with money, right? Jobs, class, um, trade, any, anything that has to do with money. So a reason to leave, something that makes you leave where you live could be unemployment. You can't find a job, right? So you, you got to work to survive. You need money to, to buy things, to, to feed your children, to eat. Uh, if you can't find a job, that's a problem. So if I can't find a job where I live, I need to get out of here. I can't stay here. Another reason could be a high cost of living, right? I, I've lived in this house forever. Now the rent is too high. I can't stay here. I can't afford this rent. Or maybe I can afford this rent, but I'm not saving any money. So it's not worth it for me to stay here. So now I need to leave, 
right? And I don't need to, I don't need to travel across the world, but I can't stay here. Okay. Um, some of the other issues would be things like social. Okay, so social is really anything having to do with with people, right? So maybe where I live, I'm facing some kind of discrimination uh, based on my ethnicity, my race, my religion, right? Things about me that I, I'm not going to change, right? That's who I am. Um, and therefore, I, I can't stay here. I'm not safe here. Or, you know, I can't be myself here. I'm not, I'm not celebrated for who I am. So I got to go. Um, other issues could include political, right? So maybe there's some sort of conflict or violence. If it's not safe where you live because there's a war going on, you need to leave, right? Maybe, and maybe you leave because it's it's escalating or maybe you left because your house was bombed, right? Either way, I can't stay here. I need to go. Um, another issue would just be like political opposition, right? So the people coming in power do not have my, you know, like my issues in mind. They're not going to protect me or they might harm me, I need to get out of here. Uh, last time I started talking a little bit about what was going on in Brazil. And I do want to bring that up a little bit right now. So for example, Brazil is in the middle of an election, a presidential election. They just had their, like all the parties run in one election. And now they go to a, a runoff where the top two run again, everyone votes again. So what's happening in Brazil right now is that one of those people who are going into the runoff is a very far right wing kind of scary person that's running where he is very much, you know, using a lot of, a lot of the same issues that we deal with in the in this country right now, a lot of like Trump tactics. Um, but he is the, the things that he is actually running on the platforms are very anti a lot of people in Brazil they're not necessarily in everyone's best interests. And so people in Brazil are scared. There are people who will leave Brazil if he's elected because of fear of what is going to happen. Um, fear that maybe one day I won't be able to leave. I need to leave now. So this is happening right now. You know, it's possible he wins and things get worse and we see huge migrations from Brazil. That would be why. Uh, it could also be that you're not safe because you supported the other person. I don't know if that will be true in Brazil. It's a democracy. It technically shouldn't be true, um, but we'll see, right? So if the person in charge of your country is not, you voted for the other person, you may no longer be safe, right? In Nazi Germany, that's what that was the case. If you weren't a Nazi, you were an enemy, um, you know, similar in like communist countries. So reasons to leave. All right. Um, other reasons to leave would be environmental, right? Natural disaster, drought. You know, we, we just had a huge hurricane in the south um, in, in Florida, Hurricane Michael. So if you live in that hurricane area, it's possible that your your home was ruined and now I need to leave, right? Um, or some sort of drought, any kind of natural disaster. We're going to start seeing a lot more of migrants because of this reason, because of climate change, right? As things get worse in the tropics, people will leave those areas because they're affected more by natural disasters. A last final reason um, would be demographic. Um, there could be some kind of like gender or age imbalance, right? Like people who live here are are mostly older. Therefore, like I don't want to stay here because I'm younger. Um, or there's there's a lot of like, you know, we'll talk about this later. A lot of like long distance migrants tend to be male. So if you live in a place where a lot of men have left, now there are a lot of women there, sort of a gender imbalance, right? So reasons to leave, I can't stay here. I need to find a husband. I need to move to the next city. A lot of people here have left. Um, or overpopulation. It's really crowded where I am. Therefore, I can't stay here, right? The, the conditions are not good. So push factors. Uh, in the chat, give me a one if you're like, I totally understand push factors. Give me a zero if you're like, I kind of understand it. I'm not 100% yet. Or you can give me any anywhere in between, any sort of decimal in between. So a one would be like, totally get it, on it, push factors make total sense to me. Uh, anything below that would be like, eh, I don't know, kind of. All right, so we got some ones, a 0 0.5, 0 0.8, awesome. So for those of you that are not ones, feel free to ask specific questions. Okay. So if, if push factors are like not, you're not hundred percent on them, ask a specific question where it says, ask a question and I'll loop back to you. Okay. So really want to make sure that you understand push factors because it is so much, you know, 
it, you have to understand these two things to understand the rest of migrations, right? So um, just to like recap, you know, push factor is just why do people leave? Why do you move? Why move where you live? You know, people don't necessarily want to leave where they are. Like people don't generally like change. They want to live where they live. That's where my family is. This is where my stuff is. I'm, I don't want to pack up and go. So what is it that makes me leave? So the other half to this is pull factors. So if I'm deciding to leave, it could be that I just want to go someplace else. It's not that where I am, I'm being pushed out of. It's just, I just want to live someplace else. Um, so any of these could be true for someone who just wanted to go, you know, one of these things is true and then they get pick up and go. Uh, it also can be true for someone who had to leave and then has to decide where do I go, right? So if I have to go because of one of these push factors, where, where, where do I decide? What street, what city, what state, what country, how far am I gonna go? So you've got economic pull factors. This would be opportunity. That's the biggest one. This is the, the biggest reason of why people leave places and why they go to places. They leave because of a lack of opportunities they go because of opportunity, right? So um, I know that I can find a job in this other place. Therefore, I need to go there. So that's that's really that that's those are the two most popular reasons. Um, other thing could be something social, right? Maybe um, in in the place I live, I'm a minority, but over there, I'm a, I'm a majority, right? I'm gonna be given different freedoms because of this. So it's worth it to go there. Um, this you see a lot of, so for example, um, I talked about Brazil before, just to like loop back, um, there, you know, and this is true for any ethnicity, there are places in the U.S. where they're sort of like sister cities, right? You, you find a lot of people from one country or, or from one, within one culture. Um, so for example, where I grew up has a lot of Brazilians. And so my dad is Brazilian. When he moves to the U.S., where does he decide to go? He goes where he knows someone. And there are other Brazilians there that speak the same language that can help him. Plenty of people do this, right? You, you find these ethnic enclaves, right? If you move to New York City, where do I decide to live? Well, I am, you know, from Somali and Somalia, and I want to live near people that speak the same language as me. Maybe I know someone or know someone who knows someone. So I'm going to choose that neighborhood. This works for every religion, every ethnicity. Um, other reasons could be political, peace, right? So I might, my, my standards might not be like super high, but I live in a place with a war. I need to go someplace without a war. I don't have to go far. I just, I need to find a place that is not in conflict. So people don't generally move to places with conflict, right? You're not going to like pick up and move right now to Syria, but people in Syria are picking up and moving to places that are peaceful. Um, and then finally, environmental. So, you know, safety, right? Like if you're in the hurricane's path, you need to get out of the path. So where are you going to go? You're going to just go north, right? So people living in southern Florida just now are migrating to northern Florida. They might not stay there. They're going to pick up and go back home, but I got to get out of the path. All right, so we got one question. Oh, the question is a one. All right, so if you have a question, put it in here. Um, but I'm going to, all right, let me get rid of that. So if you got a question, top, drop it in there. All right. So that's push and pull factors. I think that's, oh, we got one more. So, okay. So the other demographic one, if you live in a place that's overpopulated, that's overcrowded, that's typically a stage two or three uh, country, right? So when we're talking about the, the DTM, the demographic transition model, um, so if you live in a country that is within that stage, there might it might be overcrowded, um, especially within the cities. Therefore, it's worth it to move to stage four or five countries. This is what we tend to call, you know, first world countries, um, just because they are developed. Um, but we don't really use those terms anymore. So that's the reason to go to a place. 